We'll catch up with Susie and Stephen in just a moment. But before I bring them in, I wanted to show them and you something that happened in Parliament today. Our MPs didn't get to watch the Cup. Question Time went through the race. But just before Question Time, the former Deputy Prime Minister, Michael McCormack, well, he indulged everyone with a phantom call of his own. Starters locked away for the 2024 Melbourne Cup of politics. Election promises scratched. The Greens fractious in the stalls and appear unwilling to race. Field now settled. The gates crash back and they're off. The Greens head sharp left, burst through the fence and right off the course. The Teal still awaiting collective instructions from Sable and Simon Ames Court have not left the barriers. Punters had faith in Labor, but in the early stages, slipping up to the name of the former Cup winner, Windbag. The punters' former favourite, the Prime Minister, is losing ground with the cost of living rising fast. The Treasurer, who only thinks of his might and power, is proving what a nuisance he can be. He's all over the track. Anyone can win from here. He's a real media puzzle. Australians are starting to bow and declare Labor is giving up without a fight. Shocking. Around the home turn, it's the Coalition making just a dash. Labor's gone for the whip, but to no avail. In the straight, flights upgrades now being called upon. You can't rely on interest rates. New homes nowhere to be seen. Immigration in a mighty rush. High energy costs charging ahead. Grocery prices can't continue. Economic confidence has fallen. And just listen to the crowd. The coalition now has its nose in front. How terrific is that? Labor has given up. In the shadows of the post, the speaker looms down the outside and here comes question time. Neck and neck, stride for stride. The fast finishing coalition. Question time. Speaker, photo finish. The speaker. Former Deputy Prime Minister Michael McCormack, he rose to that great office, but that might have been his best ever contribution to politics, I reckon. Let's bring in Susie O'Brien from the Herald Sun in Melbourne and Radio 2 C breakfast host Stephen Senatiempo in Canberra. That was pretty good stuff. I like the way he even got flight upgrades in there, Stephen. And my favourite bit was that Teals wouldn't leave the barrier till they got the OK from Simon Holmes <laughs> <Ames of> Court. <laughs> Yeah, I give, give him 10 for effort, 8 for content and 6 for delivery. But, uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Oh, gee, you're a hard taskmaster. I've, not, I've been yeah, but very I, critical. I, I used to do of, phantom calls. So. I, yeah, I've been very critical of Mick Mac over the years, but that was good fun stuff, Susie. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm putting my money on the former Cup winner, Wimbag, <laughs> on behalf of all the politicians. Yeah, yeah I think, no, that, that I think, I think a, lot of, a lot of them go under that name, actually. <laughs> hey, so talk about, uh, talk about Wimbags. So let's have a look at this comment from 2017. Anthony Albanese on Donald Trump and how embarrassing this could be for him should things go one way or the other tomorrow. How do you deal with Trump? Like, with trepidation. Yeah, but how, how do you get by? Like, what do you, how well, do you temper your language? Well, you've got to deal with uh, who was elected. Uh, so we have an alliance with the US, we've got to deal with him. But that doesn't mean that uh, you're uncritical about it. Uh, he scares the shit out of me. And uh, I think it's of some concern that uh, the uh, leader of the free world thinks that uh, you can conduct politics through 140 characters on Twitter. He scares the sh out of him, uh, Stephen, and uh, he objects to this bloke conducting government via Twitter, whereas Albo does it through the loftier means does of it Instagram. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> look, uh, look, it look, just proves what I've said all along. This bloke never, ever expected that he was going to be <laughs> Prime Minister, uh, and now he's there, and it's like, oops... Yeah, I think he'll probably get away with it, although there's no doubt uh, if he ever meets Trump as president, uh, he'll be reminded of that. But, Susie, it brings to the fore again uh, Albo's great mate, Kevin Rudd. He's been far more um, <laughs> expansive over the years from far more senior positions, what he thinks of Donald Trump, and he'll be worried sick that he might have to pull stumps and come home if Trump wins. Yep. Imagine uh, Rod's going to have to cancel his book tour, my goodness. <laughs> but, you know, you look at that clip of Albo, just because you're wearing a T-shirt doesn't mean you get to say any crazy thing that comes in your head. Although the funny thing is I actually think a lot of people agree with him right now and it's different now. He's the Prime Minister, but he's certainly expressing sentiments that have been widely um, expressed on both sides of politics. You don't have to look too far to, to find that coalition members, uh, former um, Attorney-General George, 
George Brandis said that Trump was too dangerous to become um, president again. So I think these are very common sentiments. But, you know, he's the one who's going to be prime, that is prime minister and will have to be dealing with Trump. So yeah, the, the, we'll the, see what happens there. There's certainly common sentiments in the public and from the media, but they've always been over the top with Trump. People are allowed yeah. to abuse him the way we haven't abused any other politician. People are just so over the top. And, and it damages our national interests. Uh, Stephen, if, if Rudd's going to be an our ambassador, then it's against mm. the interests of anything Australians trying to argue when the Americans remember him saying stuff like this. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Trump at present represents a political liability for both sides of Australian politics. This guy is a problem. Uh, he is an objective problem uh, for the world, for the region. So the point is, he's big noting himself. It's going to it creates problems for him now. He'd never speak that way about Xi Jinping. You know, it's pathetic. No. Yeah, look, the thing is here is that I think the only saving grace Rudd's got is I don't think we can let the US dictate to us who our uh, diplomatic appointments are. But, look, I, I'm no fan of, of Trump's brashness, I don't like the buffoonery, I don't like the crassness, but when you dig down deep into policy and what he was actually like when he was president, all of this is unfounded and it's just absolute carry-on. It's, you know, it's look, like lefties don't like politicians from the right. What a shock. Yeah. Um, you know, so, I mean, if, Ke if Kevin Rudd is judging somebody else's performance in the top job, maybe he needs to take a look back at when he was in the top job here, what, how many times? Six or seven or something like that? Or, yeah. yeah. Twice. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it is typical. They all said uh, Ronald Reagan was a maniac and nuts, uh, and they all hmm. said uh, they all said uh, Margaret Thatcher was a monster. Uh, and of course, what they didn't say about uh, uh, John Howard uh, isn't worth uh, remembering. I mean, it's just, so, as standard, a conservative leader is vilified in this way. Which brings me to our next topic yep. today. I was I was watching the uh, Senate hearings into the ABC because I was interested in that astonishing story about this shocking reporting against Heston Russell and the Commandos. And apropos of nothing, it's seemingly completely out of context, we suddenly got this from the Green Senator Sarah Hanson-Young. He tends to really dislike the young female journalist, doesn't he, asking pesky oh, questions? Oh, Have you seen how you've treated some of the witnesses Sorry, today? Senator okay. Well, they can reject it. They can reject it if, the, if it's not true. That is, out, that is outrageous. How many young female journalists has Peter Dutton attacked oh, in press is, conferences how this year? How many you attacked today? OK. We'll either go to lunch now. Susie, so that's Peter Dutton. Does he have a reputation for attacking young female journalists? I think it is. he has a reputation for attacking journalists who ask him stupid questions, such as whether yep. Hezbollah is a terrorist organisation. I mean, come <laughs> on. And that's really a very damaging and hurtful slur from Sarah Hanson Young. And it's the kind of slur that you shouldn't just be throwing about willy-nilly just to impress the media during Senate estimates. Disgraceful.